Hello, yes, yes, I, I, I can hear you. Hello, okay. good evening. Good evening to all. Good evening. Good evening. Greetings from Israel. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, does Ralphie hear us? I don't see Ralphie here. Uh, Ralphie, do you hear us? Yes, yes, Ken. Yes, I can see you. Okay, how are you? Very happy to be on the Zoom call with all of us. Okay, and, very good. So, so, Sipora, you do the introduction, then I will introduce my colleague, Hemant, and other colleagues, Dave, and yes, everybody. I, 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 Ralphie, I suggest you start with our guests from India and go okay. slowly so that okay. Michael, our program coordinator uh, can uh, record the data and so that we know everybody. Uh, okay, so I will be really pleased to start with already the person with whom you already know is uh, my friend uh, Dev Kumar, he is the Director of International Service for the year 2015 21 and he has been uh, in Rotary for six years doing a wonderful work and today he is uh, very happy to be part of our project in okay. order to start. Uh, uh, Ranfi, Ranfi, hold on a minute. Uh, who is it now that you refer to? I want you to wave your hand so we know. Okay, uh, here we have Dave, 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 the one with the headphone and blue t-shirt. Okay. The blue Ophelia. Yes. The, the blue Ophelia. Where are you from, Vedia? Yeah, he's the director for international service. International service in what, uh, what club? Bombay Queen City. My club. Bombay Queen City, the club where you come from. Very good. Okay, Vedia, welcome to join us. Okay. Who is next? Who is next? I don't just a question. Are you recording the meeting? Yes, I am recording the meeting. Wait, well, Ralphie, hold on a minute. Just management. Uh, the meeting is being recorded. Thank you. Okay. Uh, continue, Mr. please. Rotarian past president, Mr. Heyman Jaktam, who is already part of the Rotary projects with Rotary Israel, along with Rotary Ramle and he visited, of course, the city of Ramle and Israel with a Warm welcome. Yeah, good evening. Warm Good evening. Wait, 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 just a minute, just a minute. Halfi, this has to go slower. So this is Jamshed, China. No, 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 Heman Jaktab. Heman Jaktab. <laughs> okay. I don't see him. Where is he? I'm, I'm, I'm waving my hand. Yes. You are raising your hand. Hold on a minute. Let us see. Are you seeing me? I'm not. Uh, there just are uh, too many and we are filling <laughs> the, the screen. Hold on. Okay. Never mind. We will see it later. Go ahead. Stop okay. with the shared screen. Well, if you stop the shared screen, we can see everyone. Very special waterman because he has done several projects in the Czech Dam area and he was awarded Service Above Self Award by Rotary International. Okay. Then I, I will happy. stop. Uh, hold on a minute. I will stop the sharing and I will see more. Uh, exactly. Stop the, the shared screen and we can see everyone. And I'm also put me as the in charge of the call so I can manage it with you. Uh, hold on a minute. Let me see how I can do that. Uh, hold on a minute. That's just a piece at a time. We just want now to stop the sharing. And uh, I'm still sharing here for some reason. Hello. Uh, Claim host, I uh, know, raise hand. How do I make you? Uh, you uh, raise. You we are I'm... on video for a moment, so I can introduce you. You click on more, and then you put me as yes, host. So, so my net is not working directly, so the screen will lag a lot. Yes, sir. Okay. Hello. For this moment. Okay, I need no uh, stop sharing. Okay. 
Okay, stop sharing. Okay, now, uh, uh, Malky, what do I need to do to let you control? Uh, click on participants, and then on my name, you can click on more, and then add as host. Hold on a minute, Malky, my name, more, uh, and make host, okay. Okay, now, so now you are the host. Uh, okay, very good. Great. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll uh, mute Alfie, everyone. please continue. Okay, so we have Rotanian Tajini RS, and she is the current president of the Rotaract Club of Bombay KC College. Our project together. Jamshed, hi. Uh, hello, sir. Hi. Hi, hi. So, Jamshed, and also I introduced Saroj. So, they are the ones who are from the Road Track Club of KC College. Sajini, yes. RS, and Jamshed. Okay. Okay. So this, is, this is the team which is already here, and uh, in case anybody joins later, I can introduce them as well. Thank you very much. Uh, I Go think ahead. I think we have uh, uh, Hamad uh, should be there too. Uh, we have Hamad Jack uh, Tap too, uh, but I don't see him. Uh, Hamad, uh, do you hear us? Hamad Jack Tap is here. Yes, he is there. He's he there, right. Hello to you. I introduced okay. to him. Yeah. Okay, very good. Okay, so we have everybody. So welcome. Uh, and now, <coughs> Timora, you want to introduce uh, the friends from Ramle. You have Yosti and we have uh, Shlomo. So Timora, please introduce everybody. Sipora, we can't Sipora. hear you. Sipora? Okay, let me, uh, let me introduce the members from the Ramle Club. We have the new president, Yossi uh, Giv. Uh, Yossi, you can wave your hand so everybody can see you. Here is Yossi, I just became president. Good luck in your new presidential year, Yossi. Uh, and... Uh, we welcome the Ramle Club, who is contributing a lot to the participation of twinning clubs from the world. So, Yossi, I gave the president. Now, Tsipora joined us. Tsipora, you want to continue, introduce yourself, and, uh, and uh, Shlomo. Okay. Tsipora, we don't hear you. Okay. Uh, Amnon, there is a, another member of our road track club of Bombay, Queenstown, President Manan Gada. President Manan Gada, say hi. Right. Hello, sir. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Wave, wave, wave your hand so they know who you are. Okay. Ah, well, we have young people joining the Rotary. This is lovely. Okay. Yes, because uh, water, water keeps people young, so India gives more young people. We have more yes, than Yes, absolutely. Young population. This Great. is absolutely the right approach. Okay. Great. Just one uh, one request, if I may. If anyone joining the the meeting can write on the chat his name and his uh, in his part in the Rotary Club he is part of. Okay. Would be very helpful. No Thank you very much. No okay. Chefy, Chef, uh, that's me. No uh, Shlomo Bornher from the Ramle Club, and, Bo and Shlomo Bornher is uh, the uh, leading uh, cooperator with uh, clubs around the world. So he brought Poland on board, and together with Tsipora, we have a lot of international activity coming together from the club of Ramle, presided by Yossi Agiv. Uh, Tsipora, we don't hear you. If you want to say something, you will have to open up your microphone. I can say something? Of course, Shlomo, please greet us. Okay. Past president, Bronher Shlomo, second time president in the club, and I work with Poland. 
Thank you. Thank Have you, a nice Shlomo. day, everybody. Thank you, Shlomo. <laughs> okay. Tsipora, uh, and we still can't hear you. This is, uh, there's something wrong with joining the, the conference. Okay. With the, the uh, can you hear me now? Now it's better. Now, now we yeah, hear you. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, then. Uh, well and good. So, first of all, greetings from Israel. We warmly welcoming you all from Rotary Club from Bombay. And uh, Rotary, we have also invited uh, Rotary, our friends from Rotary Club of uh, Bangalore, Manoj Cabre, also joining us this, this uh, session. Uh, for this uh, is, uh, exceptionally uh, humanitarian and educational program of this water, um, uh, Rotary Hands uh, well, Across Water, Edu complete ed education and, uh, and for the sake of uh, in, um, uh, students as well as innovative farming, innovative, uh, the, uh, all the, also the, all the purpose of the in, uh, innovative system, in, in, to introduce innovative systems of Israel to the, to the world and to the, to the students as well. We, and Rotary is really giving hands to this program. And uh, uh, we promote we, we all, all these kinds of pro programs together with other, other humanitarian programs. So we are very much happy and be a part of this program and part of these projects together with Amnon Chef A and with other clubs and the Bombay clubs and other clubs as well. Um, we wish you all the best of success and, uh, and more projects and more um, um, uh, clubs will be, will be joining, we we'll hope most. Best of luck. Thank you very much, Zipora. This is lovely. And uh, I would like to introduce the High Teach team. So we have Han Mazuk, uh, who uh, waves her hand now and uh, say hello. And she wears a uh, earphone, white earphone, so you can recognize her. Han is our chief uh, coach. And uh, she is uh, an experienced uh, water engineer, uh, taking her master's uh, education now at the uh, Negev uh, Ben Gurion University. And she is our chief coach and involved with every uh, uh, Rotary Club and every school that we have in the country. And then we have Malkiel. Uh, Malki, you can wave your hand so everybody can see you. Uh, and uh, Malkiel is a, um, our twinning program coordinator. Malkiel is a medical student just about to graduate. And he was a chief coach before he went to school. It just goes to show you how long the program is going already and uh, how many uh, prime uh, chief coaches we had. So he is very experienced. And now he took upon himself to coordinate the uh, international uh, twinning cooperation, which we wanted to start this year only as a pilot, but it becomes a very major program. And myself, I'm Amnon Sheffi, I'm the founder of the program. Uh, and uh, if there's anything at fault with this entire idea, you know who to blame. Blaming is with me. So uh, welcome everybody. Uh, Malkiel, you want to say hello to everyone? Yes, hello, you can call me Michael, because I know Malkiel is a little uh, difficult sometimes. <laughs> um, I'll be the uh, the main coach leading this program, the twinning program. If you need any assistance, you or the teachers, I'll be happy to, to help you via mail, phone that you have in the email, uh, or WhatsApp. I'm uh, completely available. And I'm happy to know you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Malki, for joining. Ken, do you want to say a few words? Hello everyone. Uh, I'm just. I just want to say that uh, I'm very happy to see everyone and to see the program um, grow. And uh, I hope we'll have a very successful year together. And good luck, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so, very much. Thank uh, you. So now okay. I'm to, to Hen and Malkiel and uh, Amnon because we have been. Uh, I have been listening to some of the lectures of. Uh, Hen and Malkiel, and they are very much uh, speaking very good English, which is a big relief for my friends from India. Yeah, okay, good. Thank you very much. And I'm glad that you put us through the challenge because now it's coming to life. 
And if it wasn't for Ralfi's belief and uh, the people that we have friends from Romania, these two uh, Rotarians told us, listen, it's going to work. Go ahead. So we believed them. And so now we are uh, running ahead and uh, together we'll jump into the water. So what do we want to do today? We want to briefly go over the idea of the program, how to create this collaboration and what is the program that we do in Israel. And then to give you a little outline of what is about to take place going forward. So for that purpose, uh, I will start by sharing the screen now. Uh, uh, Just a little uh, question before, I don't think everyone has interest, introduced himself. I know, I think we have, we, are let there me, anyone? Uh, let, let me speak, uh, I'm Manoj Kabre, Namaste. Namaste from Bangalore. I think Zipora mentioned about me and uh, Amnon, I think we, we interacted during the Ayala Aqua webinar as well. So right, and you were in Israel a number of times and we are happy yes. to have you on board. Yeah, thank you very much. Hi, Manon. And thanks. Thanks for joining. No thanks problem. Thanks for joining no the meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Zipora, for making this happen. Uh, along with me, we have uh, our water warrior, Mr. Sridhar. Uh, Hi, Sridhar here. How are you? Hi. How are he's, you? Welcome. He's good, uh, good. very passionate about water and he has been doing a lot of work, which we will interact later uh, as to what we could do together. From our district, we also have Mr. Uh, Raghu Alam, Rotarian Raghu Alam. He's waving his hand yeah. now. He's Hello. our chair for uh, he's our chair for Vasrag, Water okay. and Sanitation Rotary Action Group. Thank you very much, Raghu, uh, for for joining. Uh, I have uh, before we uh, uh, share the screen. Uh, I have uh, some blessing and uh, congratulations from uh, PDG Avner Fuchs, uh, who couldn't join us today because he is in charge of his uh, hospital. He runs a big private hospital. And yeah. you know, with the corona, this is elderly hospital, very critical. So with his, uh, <coughs> with his activity today, he could not uh, join us, but yeah. uh, he sends his best regards and best wishes and was very proud to know that there is another Wasrag um, uh, 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 agent yeah. here on board. Yes. And yes. it's very, very encouraging. Yeah. Avner is an ambassador. I would like to introduce, uh, Amnon, Dr. Amnon, I would also like to introduce Chikanna Gouda. Uh, who is uh, waving his hand now? He is from a, okay. Chikana. Can you wave the hand? Yeah. So Chikana is from a company called Baker and Hughes, and they are our partners, our CSR partners. They have been doing some wonderful work in the field of water. I think I have written to Zipora about that, and also to some of you. So we will interact more often as we go along. Oh, excellent! Have, very, very good. We have uh, Prasad. We have Prasad. Okay. From uh, Bangalore. Hey Prasad. Okay. Good Hello evening. Prasad. I was waiting to hear from you. Yeah, I'm the director, of water and sanitation, district 3190, and I'm also the ambassador for Zoom for India. Yeah. Okay. okay. Also, we also have Amnon. We have the Rotaract Club of Bombay, Queenstown, secretary Hia Koradia. Welcome, Hia. Say yes. hi by waving. Uh, hi. Hi, sir. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Okay, this is wonderful. This is really very exciting. We all know that India is very big, but until you <laughs> see it, you don't realize how big India is. <laughs> okay, uh, what we want to do now is, uh, Malke, if you let me share my screen, uh, I, uh, uh, you either let me or I can claim my uh, um, control again. Let's see. Uh, I'll make you co-host, it's okay. Okay. Wait a minute. Okay. Uh, there is a brief presentation of the entire program, which uh, I sent you, but I will give you some insight, and then we will go into the outline. So this will I'll just you. share your screen and I'll allow it. Okay. I, I, I did try, but it uh, did not get approval. Wait a minute. Okay, go ahead. Okay, very good. Um, okay, very good. All right. Uh, wait a minute. That's not. Uh, hold on a minute. Uh, Just a question for Parasad. Excuse me if I don't uh, pronounce it well. 
you're not part of a specific Rotary Club, you're of all India? No, from the you. district, Malki, he is from the district. The Rotary works by district, so that is from the district, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm the leader for the entire gang of water and sanitation for the district. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, very good. Okay, can you see uh, my uh, screen? No, I see you don't see my yes, screen. Yes, but the mail, the, the screen of the mail, we see. Wait, wait a minute, why do we see the screen of the mail? The same is it. It's a share screen with Hadash, with if Tacheta Mazeget. It's a share screen of Hisha Shaha, if Tacheta share screen Shah Mazeget. מלכי, תשים את כולם על מיעוט. Okay, all right. Uh, now let me mute uh, this. Uh, um, okay, my, uh, Monkey, I mute the, uh, my second mic because uh, I have two uh, two mics here now, and uh, the shared the shared screen should not be uh, right here. Okay, and then we have some okay. new. Okay. Okay, do you hear me now? Some new guests get coming in. No, wait, wait a minute. Uh, Ma, am I the host or you're the host? I'm the host and uh, we have so some new Allow guests. the new guests in and we will continue. Uh, okay. Okay. So, uh, you see the presentation now, right? Yes. Yes, okay, very good. So, this is the program and uh, we will go briefly through it. The first slide is interesting because it shows uh, uh, the uh, past uh, president, uh, where he said to us, please take it to the world on the program. So we're doing this under the blessing of Barry Rassin, who saw the program. So what do we do? We are launching the Hands Across Water Twinning, where we will collaborate between schools around the world and schools in Israel that study the water challenges. The idea is that we want to promote awareness of the water and sanitation challenges on one hand and the available solution on the other. We will show you the kind of things that we do in terms of an address of the challenge. Uh, and then that isn't to say that these are the only solution. It only goes to show you that even if there is a big challenge, as is the case in Israel, you can still find solution as we do in Israel or others. And we would encourage you to work on the issue and compare results for the students around the world with students in Israel so that there is a community being built where the children will know about the challenge and they will evolve into grown-ups that really take charge and prevent the problem by addressing it so that they will take charge of their own destiny in the future because the challenge is tremendous and unless they do it, they will not have water to drink. So it's very simple. And this builds up a highly engaging learning experience where they will study sciences and so forth. And so it's education and it's leadership and they take responsibility for their life. And it's not just demonstration and campaign like Greta Thornberg and so forth, but we want to substantiate it with basic knowledge so they know what they're talking about. This is the essence of the program. So we are doing STEM education, planning for science, technology, engineering, art, and math, very multidisciplinary, and it is based on water and sanitation, but it basically addresses science in general, physics, mathematics, biology, chemistry, and so forth. It is relevant to the curricula so that it is very attractive for the teachers. If we come to the school and tell them that we teach about water, they would say, well, we don't have too many hours to dedicate to water. But if you tell them we teach science, physics, 
chemistry, mathematics, based on water, then it's a different story. And there, the teachers can integrate it into the school. So finding the relevance to the curricula is fundamental, and we managed to do it very well here in Israel. We uh, do research and project-based learning, very advanced learning, where the children are engaged and they do research. They use, uh, they study the principles, but they apply them with experimentation. Uh, they visit facilities and they see how the challenge looks in real world, how the systems look in real world. And so it becomes very practical and it's futuristic. It deals about the problem of the future and about the solution. So it is very engaging, as we said. And now we are working on cross-cultural collaboration. We have experimented this in Israel between Jews and Arabs, and it's been very successful. And now we want to do it with all kinds of cultures around the world. So what our claim is that even if there are challenges, like we have in India, like we have in Israel, like we have everywhere in the world, but when you work together on the shared common challenge of having water, then everybody becomes engaged in the solution and so this becomes a base for collaboration. If you bring youngsters together and just tell them talk about peace, you get exactly the opposite. But if you bring them together to work on a common challenge, then it's a good story. So this is what you see, students from all kinds of sectors working together. Um, we have had uh, close to 100 schools. We've been operating since 2006. Uh, we have by now 15,000 students in the program. And the program is growing very quickly. Uh, a lot of content, we have about 250 chapters, few of which we will translate to English and make available for you. A lot of STEM ideas. And we have a recognition by the Rotary Fund as being the noteworthy program uh, in the centennial year. So it's a, considered uh, a major program for the Rotary. We've enjoyed uh, two global grants in the past and now the third one will support the program. Uh, and it is a program that's designed for the future and it addresses the knowledge growth. A good example, for instance, is a new module that we just developed that deals with the coronavirus. So next year, the coronavirus will be a chapter that we will teach from the biology and the genetics and viruses and so forth, all the way to mathematics and avoidance and social distancing. Uh, scheme of measurement, assessment, PCR, and what have you, uh, the immunization, the immune system and immunization process development and so forth. So uh, this is, you know, very current. Um, there are a lot of videos and uh, podcasts that you can uh, listen to. Uh, I don't think we will spend a lot of time on that now. Uh, I, uh, I don't want to get into it, but you can see uh, there are um, very good videos uh, with sound and with uh, description of the program and the way it uh, works and functions. And uh, I think if you look at it, you will learn more about the nature of the program. But we, uh, I don't think we'll spend a lot of time on that. I'll just let you show some aspects. Here's an ancient well that uh, children use as a physics lab and then they build models out of Lego uh, of that same well. And you see cross collaboration from all communities. You see science work. Uh, this is a factory for modern uh, valves, hydraulic valves. You see agricultural farm where we do rain harvesting. So a lot of activity is you know, very uh, tangible and very uh, intriguing for the children. Here's another generation of pump and then ultra modern pump. And then they go to facilities where they make water. This is our supporter from America in a school. That's another uh, experiment. Here's a school that uh, we're doing uh, an advanced program that really changed the entire school. And uh, the children are aware of it. And uh, by now they are graduates. But this is really the nature of the program. Let's see if I go back here, if I can still recover. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, Okay, uh, let me see. Um, I want to go back to that presentation, which uh, I lost. Hold on a minute.
Okay. All right. So, uh, so we saw those slides now. Uh, we guide the schools and we will also guide uh, schools in India. We will do this over the internet. We will have a few training. We are considered experts in teachers training. In fact, our program has become a teachers training activity for the entire country. Everybody that participates in our program gets credit for the training. Uh, and we do some teacher training, STEM projects, and they, we have a large e-learning program that supports it. And uh, we encourage students to do uh, school visits and uh, class talks about their work and uh, go out and do some outdoor research. And now this twinning cooperation, uh, which we are running together. So we, Hightage is a private company uh, that supports, that we founded the program and we work with Rotary and uh, we will be guiding you as well. As I said, the challenge is water awareness. Awareness of the shortage and awareness of the solution. So there's a shortage of awareness and that's what we want to address. The solutions and how much it costs and what it would mean. The number is tremendous. You need to invest $40 trillion in the infrastructure to recover the devastating situation we have worldwide. This kind of number will not get invested unless the public makes a stand. And so what we want to do is to have the youth understand that it, their life depends on it. And so as they grow up, and we have other youngsters with us, so that's lovely, uh, and we take a stand right now and make sure that governments uh, take care of the infrastructure because otherwise we will not have water. The key idea between the twinning is to provide the current science education, to promote the awareness, and to present possible solutions, which we will show you. And based on that, we will have schools work on their programs separately in their different countries and regions. And then we will have them share work with the partnering twinning school. So this is where we want to go. Train the teachers and provide them content and coordinate the twinning, and we will arrange for each and every school to have a twinning school. Identify the focus area which have relevance to the local curricula. If you are working with a science teacher on physics, you want to work maybe on pumps and so forth. If it's a teacher on biology, it's a different subject and so forth and so on. And mathematics, history, what have you. So, but we want for every teacher to find a relevant part and then study the background. If it's mathematics, you know, um, then, you know, the, the physics, uh, laws of Newton or chem or biology, um, the, the uh, genetics or, or what have you, whatever chapter is being taught so that the teacher feels the program is supported. You know, the uh, water treatment situation, uh, water treatment facilities are based on sludge and on uh, germs and bacteria working and dissolving the, the residue. So one needs to know the genetics and multiplication and you know, exponential growth of the algae and what have you. So all that becomes a subject. Uh, on one hand, water treatment. On the other hand, it relates to the curricula. And then for each and every subject, after they study the background, we will show and guide you as to how to make STEM experimentation so the students really feel and can put their hands on uh, experimentation and feel. And then we will connect to, to the twinning class. We want to make sure that the schools are somewhat advanced on the way and they have an idea of what to do and start to promote it and start to do this before we start the twinning. So that the twinning between two schools will be on an even keel. The schools from India will have what to say and the schools from Israel will have what to say, and they will share. So we will be a sharing experience. In the beginning, it will all be done with schools in Israel, of which we have about 100. But eventually, we will have schools from all over the world interact. Um, and then share the product and have mutual discussion. So you will have children from Israel, students from Israel and teachers, review the kind of reports that you will be producing at India. And you guys in India will have a chance to look at what our students did here in Israel and uh, provide your idea, uh, criticism, contribution, ideas as to how to do it better and so forth. So we will have mutual uh, feedback to each other 
and that will build the, co the cooperation. And then we can get into meeting over Zoom, correspondence, sending emails and what have you. But we have a substance before we start to really just do sharing, wave our hands, which is really somewhat meaningless. Uh, and once we do this, and this is successful, and of course it will not be completely successful, we will surely make mistake, but the idea is that we want to listen and to correct. This is a pilot after all. But when we eventually make this successful, we want to spread the word. We want to expand and we want to have many clubs and many schools in India and many schools around the world and in Israel and so forth until this becomes a giant a network. So th this is our goal. As to the global water crisis, I don't think we need to add a lot. This just goes to show you the severity of the situation, but it is really terrible, especially here in the Middle East, Iran and what have you, really devastating situation. The truth of the matter is that even in America, it is not all that great and some places are doing really very bad. Some facts about the challenge, you know, it is challenging, but you know, more people in Africa have access to cell phones and communication than to water. And you know, a billion people don't have access to clean water. Two and a half billion people have poor sanitation. Uh, you guys in India don't need us to tell you there. Uh, it's really challenging. And so uh, a lot of problems, not a question that there is a problem. And we waste a lot of water. You know, when we drink water, it's one thing, but you know, even bread is very costly, let alone eating meat or chocolate. Look at the amount of water you need for a liter of uh, chocolate. It's like amazing. So we are very wasteful. And if you make children aware, it becomes uh, a more uh, solvable situation. And we from Israel uh, feel we have a responsibility to try and share what we've gained because we have been on the verge of the desert since our ancient times. So we know, and it's in our culture to try and address these challenges and uh, the mentality of the people has water at as high regard. So we have developed those technologies uh, to address it. And that's something that we really want to share. What are the technologies that we use uh, as key? This is not a course in water, but just to give you a glimpse, there are uh, a few uh, key elements. Four basic technologies, reclamation of wastewater, wastewater treatment and reuse of water for irrigation in the agriculture, Desalination, our water comes from the sea and this is seawater desalination, which we do with high energetic efficiency, which makes it affordable. We do effective irrigation using drip irrigation and we prevent leaks because more than 50% of uh, people today in the world live in cities and urban leakages in the world sometimes reach 25, 30, 40%. It's a terrible number. We prevent leakages. We have cities in uh, Israel with leakages that is below 2%. And our goal is to be 6% nationwide. We are by far better by now. So this is really very interesting. A lot of technologies are involved in monitoring, detecting leaks, and preventing them. So these are four technologies, the leading technology. There are others, but these are the important technologies. But what is important is not just the technology, but the fact that we apply those very poorly. The management of the water system in Israel is very well. When you compare it to uh, management of water in the world, we are doing really very well. That isn't to say that we manage everything well. Uh, if you ask people today on the street about management in Israel, you will leave everybody complaining about how we mismanaged the second wave of Corona. While the first wave was managed excellently, uh, apparently, we made a few mistakes going into the second wave, and we are suffering, and we are retreating back now and responding, learning from the mistake, and hopefully it will be better. But it's not to say that management in Israel in general is very good everywhere. But as it relates to water, our management is relatively high and advanced, and so this is the element number five. And of course, the last one, which is what we are dealing with, is turning this entire beautiful set of technologies, practices, and what have you, into a base for modern education. So if you take that and you say, this is not just done in the facilities, water utilities, and so forth, but we turn this into a base for the youngsters to study. We give them an advantage vis-a-vis -vis the knowledge growth 
which is overwhelming, and now they learn current technologies, and immediately they learn about the future. So this is very interesting for the children. They study the future. There is a lot of innovation going on in Israel, and you can find about it in this wonderful book called Let There Be Water. I highly recommend that you buy this on Amazon. It's available, and it's an excellent textbook that takes a broad look at, on everything we do relative to uh, water, including uh, on education. So by all means, please uh, get yourself a copy, and this will be very helpful. We have a tremendous amount of uh, presentations. Part of it are in English, and part of it is in Arabic, and a lot of courses in Hebrew, and we will translate more and more of it. Um, and we have a project-based learning experience. Uh, you take, for instance, everything uh, that we do in terms of water saving, and you experiment with the children as to how water saver and aerator and all that, how effective they are, and what is the amount of water used at home and so forth, and all of a sudden they become engaged. We worry about understanding. This is very important, cause and effect. We don't leave black boxes without understanding. So when you go to a desalination facility, this is what you see, uh, hundreds or rather thousands of membranes. But when you see this, you don't understand what a membrane is and how it works. So we take open membranes like this, blow them up, provide a lecture to the class uh, on how the membrane themselves are structured, how they're put in shells of how high pressure, where the water comes through, and how the desalinated water come out, and how it is integrated into a big system. And this entire set of pieces of presentation is turned into an e-learning course, and we will show you a presentation like this. And so now you know by learning through the whole thing, from the membrane to the classroom, about the whole concept. And then when you're done, you go to a lab like in the Technion, which is the equivalent of the MIT, the Israeli uh, Technical uh, University, and you can actually experiment with membranes. And then when the children come to the, dis to the dis seawater desalination facility near the shore, and they see these facilities and the pumps and what have you, they really understand. So the entire chain of cause and effect and the structure, we make sure that they have it all. So it's something that they eventually understand. The same is applied to wastewater. So you don't just come to the facility, but you work about, uh, you study the uh, biology, you study the processes. And so when you come here, you can understand what you see. And then you go to the field and you see how we apply it for agriculture and for irrigation. And you understand why the pipes are all painted in purple because you want to differentiate it from drinking water and from wastewater. This is someplace in between. This is treated wastewater. In fact, you can really drink it. It is clean enough, but you don't want to risk it. So it, you're not allowed to drink it. It is only for irrigation. So that process in itself becomes subject for um, schooling. And since all of our water now comes from the sea line, so whereas in the past it all came from the Sea of Galilee going down to the dry desert, uh, now it is all coming from the shoreline from five desalination facilities. There's six now now being built uh, and up in the north. And so a whole new piping system was developed to try and uh, pump the water around the country, including going all the way up to the Galilee through a lot of height and elevation. So um, this is uh, uh, one other thing that we uh, teach. Um, so you see uh, the, the entire uh, process is uh, um, explained in details. And this is an interesting slide because you see what it does is it says, yeah, while we do reclaim wastewater and uh, use it for irrigation, there is a lot of danger involved here, the bacteria involved and so forth. And who knows what the impact is when you bring this uh, desalinated water into uh, green fields and uh, irrigate with it. Maybe it will have an impact on the produce or possibly even on the soil and so forth. And no, no, it's interesting. We're talking with you guys in India. What we say to the children in Israel, we say, you know, listen, we have a lot of friends in India and they are starting to use reclaimed wastewater irrigation now. And, you know, God forbid if something happens to the soil because of the use of irrigated uh, reclaimed water, 
Um, who are the Indians going to come for advice as to what to do about it? And of course, the children say, you know, since we invented the technology or promoted it at least, and we sell it all over the world and so forth, of course, people from around the world will come to Israel to ask for advice. And then we go to the children and say, who is it that they're going to come for advice to in 20 years? Who is it going to be, who are going to be the experts in 20 years? And obviously the children realize right away that we are talking about them. So this created a tremendous amount of engagement. So what you see here are students in Kriyat Gat, having gone through the, desalination, the reclamation facility and studied the, the exponential growth and decay and uh, the so forth. Here they do an experiment with, uh, with soil that was irrigated with simulated reclaimed water because there's a big safety issue. You don't, you're not allowed to play with reclaimed wastewater in school. We, we make um, security and safety our prime goal because we have students interact with industry. Industry was not meant as a school. When you start to bring children to uh, industry, you have to be very careful about safety. So we do pitch about that. But then we tell them, all right, so we simulated uh, wastewater and we irrigate the soil and, you know, it has impact. And so what the children are doing, they are studying ways to recover. How do you rinse in the soil should it be disturbed by the reclaimed water? So the children are positioned in terms of state of mind in the future, looking at a future problem and and. At, at a potential solution for such a problem. And this is a very interesting uh, um, state of mind, and so it creates a lot of engagement. I, I want to proceed here uh, a lot on water supply and water towers and pressure and what have you, the energy involved, water valve, hydraulic valves, where they come and see, and even the ancient pumps the, of the wells that you see, of which we have some are still operating in India. We've seen some movies like this. Uh, but we go into the physics of it. How does it work? What is the force? What are the loads? And how does this translate to the transmission and the moments and the lever? And you see a lot of mathematics. So when the children play with it, they don't just play. They really are actually running experimentation, which we support with a lot of uh, low cost, very effective um, digital data loggers and measurement devices that work with your cell phone and they, you know, clip to each other and you can buy you know a few of those and have a whole chemical lab uh, with your cell phone running you know for very low cost available at Amazon and so forth provided by a company called uh, SES New Log and so we work with them and it's that's a lovely arrangement we also of course work with the academia and we have a large graduation event where you can see all the students present their work and of course we will help you get together with um, the academia in India, so that you can have some reference like this as well. And then when the year end comes, the children present their work and you can see a lot of robots and a lot of chemical experimentation, uh, you know, even automated chemical system and so forth. So, you know, this is a really very cutting edge. Uh, we are talking about robots that they build now to assess residue of coronavirus in the sewage system. That's a company built in Israel called Kandu, and we are building robots with the children inspired by the Kandu product. And then, of course, they present the reports and posters in a very professional manner, and they have to protect it, have to defend it uh, in English, uh, and that's really something very nice. And we teach them how to do it, and we will show you how to do it on video, on YouTube, and you can log into our website, highteach.com. I sent you the link in the correspondence and you can see how the children present it fluently in a couple of minutes they do wonderful work here's an example of how we compare say between israel and miami where we ran a pilot last year they don't have rarity and sparsity of water like we do they have too much water they have flooding and they have pollution because of the flooding and so forth and we have different problems so side by side we compare and the children will collaborate really very uh, practical and it, it allows uh, the groups to work on local problem with our support and then eventually compare and do the comparison uh, here's a class that came from florida to an arab class in uh, jaffa and spent together after 
an hour together, they could, we couldn't tear them apart because they were so excited. Here's another interesting experience that we had uh, Ralfi join us uh, last year, where we bring uh, students from all uh, the world, from, I mean, from all the country uh, to a water technology show. Uh, and what we present to them are challenges, water challenges from around the world. Ralfi spoke with the children and told them about the challenges, the, the pollution challenges in India and what have you. And then they went to a show and learned about the modern technologies. And then they worked together, caucusing and presenting solutions to the challenges that they learned about. And that was really a thrilling experience. And this is what we did in 2017. And we did another one like this uh, in last year. And it was really very, very encouraging. You see the children in 2019. And Ralph was here with us. So this is for the children something very, very unique. And so we have tremendous support coming from America. And this is the Rotary um, uh, granting us the noteworthy program recognition in the centennial year, which was really something very important. We have Rotarians, of course, from across the country joining us. But most importantly, we have Barry Rasin, PRI, last year, visited the school. He saw the children working together. And he said, you're doing peace building, you're doing water and sanitation doing research on water and you do education. This is wonderful. He says, this is Rotary. And he ended up saying, we must examine how to take this wonderful thing you do here to the world. That's his word. And this, guys, is exactly what we are trying to do. His deputy VPI, Babalula, was here, had a similar experience. And this is the amount of companies and organizations that support and participate with us. We didn't have room for everybody. We have 16 in Israel, and Israel is much smaller than India. So I imagine you can easily have 100 companies, groups, supporters, and that would be very important. Now, this is the program outline that I wanted us to discuss. I don't think we need to go through this, this entire thing because the 12 steps here are basically what we just discussed, namely uh, step by step, uh, uh, that we first of all submitted the global grant, it will be approved, and we will then expect you to uh, f f fund in your contributions, and we will start the program formally. Um, we have uh, the program reviewed, and we had good comments, and in fact, yesterday, we got the note that it was approved, and we were just waiting for the global grant number, uh, and then we will uh, be able to uh, uh, allow you to uh, to pay your dues. Uh, we expect a thousand dollar form uh, club and uh, two thousand dollar DDF from the uh, district. But we will worry about that later. Following that, we would start what we are now down doing. First of all, working with the Rotarians involved, and so that we can uh, find out then the schools, explain the program as we did here. We wanted to do it with the teachers, but given the timing. Uh, uh, we, are, we don't have teachers now, obviously, so we will have it next year. No one knows how the school year will start, if there will still be corona and so forth. So we can still do it over the internet, but we will go with that same process with them. And then individually, uh, after we connect with the schools, with the Rotary uh, Club and the schools, we identify and introduce the process as we do now, and we help them run uh, the the uh, global um, uh, the, the goal to to get you to know the schools and the teachers. We want to meet them and learn if they're interested in mathematics and physics. Uh, you know what uh, school group, age group they want. Uh, ninth group, eight ninth year is the best. Uh, maybe tenth, but we want to listen to them. If there's a younger group, we'll work with the younger. Group. If there's you know teenagers on a motorax or coming from university, we will interact with them. So we need to know them. So that was the purpose. And after do that, we will outline with the teachers together uh, through a virtual training program, like what we do now, which is in every school, uh, and select together with them the subject on which they will work, uh, because it will it has to be adapted to every school. They, they have to realize it. They have to feel comfortable about it. It has to be a little challenging, but not overwhelming. So you need to do it peacefully with them. So that would be number one. So you can see a lot of, a lot of preparatory phases. And then we do a teacher training and we'll show them how 
to take this specific guidance and how to um, make this relevant to the curricula. Uh, and uh, uh, we will then provide you some material on the typical technology to use, like on desalination or reclamation or wastewater, three, four typical presentation in English. So you can take this as the guide and then uh, you will be able to translate it if you want to your local language. Specifically for India, it's less relevant because English you know, is, is clearly your natural language. Uh, and then we would encourage you to start your STEM preparatory and then STEM uh, research. So we want to have the children involved in selecting the uh, question area to be research and so forth, hypothesis and what have you, or if they want to build a model and so forth. So we will give you some guidance uh, including the Rotarians, how the Rotarians follow up and so forth. Turns out this is very, very important. And uh, we would uh, um, then allow you uh, to work with the teachers at the school. Once you start to work, uh, we, will start, we will then start to set up the twinning. We will give you an idea of who you will twin with, but we don't want the uh, twinning communication to be uh, overwhelming before you started to actually work on the program understand what it is, and actually get some achievement. So we want you to feel comfortable that you can really do something. You will have some challenges initially, clearly, uh, but we will be there to help you. And we want to have you at a level where you feel comfortable about your achievements and so forth. And then you can start to share with the Israeli schools and you will find it very interesting. They will find it interesting. It will be done in English and so forth. And when you exchange, uh, we want you to have all the uh, reports that you produce in uh, either uh, uh, PowerPoint, presentation, report, document, video clip, what have you, in any digital form that we can exchange and that will form the basis for the collaboration. So this is basically the plan. We have uh, 40 clubs from around the world joining. So we're not gonna go over the whole thing now. Uh, you have some connection here but you saw the people, we will be in touch with you. So this basically is uh, the entire program. The other uh, document, I don't think we need to cover uh, because we briefly covered it, but you can see it. It's all written up the same way that I've described, the reasoning, the rationale, the partners that we have, the process, and then most importantly, the different topic, the water processes and so forth, and the outline that I've just gone through. 12 steps that will get you all the way. So this basically was there. And if you have any questions now, I will gladly uh, answer the questions. So thank you very much. The You're welcome. First question is that, can you please give a timeline of the beginning and how it's going to progress in terms of the schedule? Not necessarily yes. you need to answer it now. You can send an email to all of us. No, no, I, I, will, I will respond. First of all, this outline document that I sent you here, this outline document that you see, in the beginning yeah. of it, there is a schedule. And the key elements of the schedule are the following. We begin in the beginning of the year, September or rather October, November time frame, when the school year really starts. We will use the first, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah, I'm known. In India, the school starts now. Oh, the school starts now? When is the vacation in India? Our vacation got over. It was eaten up by Corona. Oh, okay. So this is an adaptation to the Corona. So we actually have vacation by beginning of April till end of May. By beginning of June, our schools begin. And our actually uh, September, when your schools begin, we are almost at the end of first quarter. And uh, then we have in India, about 200 festivals out of which 50 are given vacations. So we have a 50 days holiday throughout the 365 days plus the two months of holiday. So the schools have a lot of holidays and vacations here. Okay. Okay. So that's why right. <laughs> what we want to propose is that our road track clubs, they are not only doing the projects when the school is open, which is basically their junior college. Earlier, they used to study in the schools. Now they are studying in the junior colleges, which are attached to the colleges, but not for very postgraduate studies. So those students, in my opinion, are more 
eligible from India, at least from my uh, district, to be partners of studying and doing the projects with us. Okay, okay. Uh, well, here's an excellent outcome of this conversation because this is a surprise to me and we're learning. So what I suggest, we will work together with you and the leaders on every club and we will try to address it. Of course, we will have to expedite. Uh, I can already see if you have a 200th centennial uh, celebration, uh, uh, we will try to uh, have something completed by then. So we will expedite it so that you can have something to show in your um, joyful uh, uh, celebration. So uh, we will change the time schedule on your work uh, and, uh, and uh, respond to it. We have a teacher training here in Israel uh, uh, later on this month, but after we finish that on the 23rd of July, we will attend to it. We will start to work with you on a different schedule. And so that by the time our school year starts next year, you will have something to show and we can expedite the process. So we will adapt the schedule. This is exactly what we intend to do. And uh, uh, I think we will schedule another meeting like this with uh, clubs, uh, I mean with schools. Now that you have uh, listened to that and you can read the document, you can make your choices as to what would be the best schools or whether university as you suggested and so forth. And uh, we will talk again in practical terms and uh, set up the program accordingly. This is a very important input. Thank you very much. And second question, which is about the teachers, how we will identify the teachers and how you will train them to be able to conduct the program locally. Okay. So we plan to do this, of course, mostly using Zoom uh, and with some guidance, like we did here, you know, more thoroughly a little bit uh, and have them go through the process. But in terms of the choice and the selection, this is the crucial thing. And I can tell you what is the most important criteria. The most important criteria is that the teachers are willing, that they are interested. It doesn't matter whether they come from mathematics or teaching English or Indian history or biology or that's immaterial. Science, is, of course, is more natural. They are to be teaching the proper classes. So uh, we're talking high school in your case uh, and maybe junior uh, university uh, with the Rodorax. So uh, you, know, you choose the age group. We are working mostly with ninth and 10th and 11th grade. But you can go a little higher. I think it would be more appropriate, at least for openers. It will give you a better chance for success. And then when we communicate with them, we have to find out their sweet, soft spot. What is it that would make it work for them? So this we do through interaction with them. Uh, and this is why we wanted initially not to have too many schools. We thought we would have two schools, one in every district. We have more districts now, so we may have three schools or thereabout so that we can give them this personal attention and help you. So you need to identify the potential teachers and most importantly, the potential um, schoolmaster, the schoolmasters that are interested. Once you have an environment like this, and preferably with a school that you already work with on other programs, because the Rotary does a lot of education programs with schools. Once you find this potential, we will get involved over Zoom together with you and try to sort of sell the program to them, explain to them, send them, of course, the information, and then do a lot of listening. The purpose of this meeting was primarily, as we did with the teachers from Romania, for instance, was to do this introduction as we did, but then to stop for a minute and listen to the teachers. What is it that they would like to achieve out of this program? Where do they see their teaching challenges today? Where do they see their water challenges today? Listen to them and then together build a solution that addresses their problem. It's not a big trick to try and uh, impress on teachers in India and in Mumbai uh, what is a solution that's good for teachers in, uh, you know, Ramle in Israel. Uh, maybe completely different, uh, you know, uh, challenges. And so therefore, it is very important for us to listen to the teachers. So you pick teachers that have general interest, that are willing to do the extra mile and effort, that are excited about the opportunity to do something new, and you bring them on board and we will communicate with them. They have to have a supporting schoolmaster, they have to be open-minded, 
Uh, and in terms of the subject method they teach, it could be multidisciplinary. Sciences is best, of course, but it doesn't have to be sciences only. I'm sure that in the history and the culture uh, of India, there's a lot of issues uh, having to do with water, and you can combine that with poetry on water and what have you, uh, because it always is, water is so essential. So this is how we select the teachers. Great. Uh, Aman, uh, can I come in? Uh, Prasad here yeah. from Bangalore. Yes. See, yes. basically, uh, Rotary District 3190 uh, is having an MOU with the Indian Plumbing Association. We are the people who take care of the nation's plumbing. So, okay. we can train these students also, basically. We are experts in this field of water and sanitation. Okay, so this is funding yeah. for the facility, you mean? Uh, you know, like basically for uh, facilitate teaching for the rotaractors, for the schools. Oh, very important because you see, this is very important uh, because we right now made this extremely affordable, you know, because we didn't know what's the effort and so forth. So we wanted to experiment with it. So we're not charging the high and we're just experimenting. But uh -huh. as it looks right now, we can already see that there's a tremendous amount of effort um, in supporting this process, even from a bureaucratic point of view, just to be able to set up this call today and the timing and the connection with everybody and the coordination, uh, it, it seems like this is going to be a very big challenge to manage the program. And we really want to do it and we know we can succeed, but we will need more funds. And these funds uh -huh. are not available. Our current global grant is very limited. It uh, has about, $130,000 and it's, um, most of it's going to be used on schools in Israel and we have a small amount dedicated to support the twinning and it's not going to be enough. So if you have access to extra fund, this is very helpful. We will communicate about it uh, offline, but this clearly will need by far more funding to be able to do it you know, in a serious manner. Uh, it doesn't necessarily require that we do a lot of traveling and I don't know that traveling would even be possible because of the corona. But if traveling was possible and everything was okay, then we were thinking about having a couple of days um, training uh, either for teachers to come here jointly or for us to go over and do such a round uh, training, uh, say in Bombay. Uh, so, but we, this is too early to plan uh, because we don't know what will happen with the corona. Uh, I understand. But, uh, but even to do it over the internet, it will require more coaches and more timing available and support. And so we would need more funding eventually for the program. So if you have access to evolving funding from uh, Rotary or from the uh, local industry, uh, it will be very helpful. Sure. And one more subject to which uh, you have, uh, maybe since Israel doesn't receive much rain, uh, the very important subject in India is uh, rainwater harvesting. Yes, yes, yes. Well, this is a subject that we have a lot of experience with. That's, that's um, right. And we can tell you a lot about it. It has advantages and disadvantages. Uh, in Israel, formally speaking, uh, it is not allowed. Not allowed because the rain has to come on the soil and has to go to the aqueducts, uh, to, to the aquifers and so forth. It sort of belongs to the state. So you cannot harvest the water and use it by yourself, formally speaking. Of course, in practice, it's allowed. But then there's the question of sanitation, because when you start to accumulate the water, then you have a sanitation challenge. And not just a matter of harvesting it, it's harvesting and storing. When you start to store water and manage it separately, then you have a major uh, sanitation and safety question. Safety of water in Israel is extremely highly regarded, extremely, because we have all kinds of dangers, including, you know, potentially terror and what have you. So the water system, the central water system is highly monitored, automatic along the entire system, and tap water in Israel are at come out safe and at very high quality. So it's not to be compared to uh, rainwater, which initially is fine, of course, but when it starts to accumulate, it's a big challenge. So what they've been doing in Israel, they've been harvesting the rainwater and using it only for 
sanitation, only for toilet flushing. That much, I mean, that, that distant from uh, human usage because of a safety issue. And then it becomes very challenging to maintain and so forth. So although we have about 100 schools in the country where rain harvesting system were put in place uh, to save water on the toilet flushing, uh, they're not maintained properly. It's very costly to maintain. And so the bottom line is that it's not a very effective manner. But on the other hand, where you don't have water at all, and you can just spread a big shed and collect the water and have something to drink because otherwise you don't have a solution. Of course, it, then it is a very viable solution. We have a company that's starting, uh, in fact, a, a startup that has just started with a very light, low cost system uh, that is aimed at, and we can tell you a lot about it, but the big system, the small system, the advantage, the disadvantage, this is a subject we know very well. Thank you. Okay, uh, gentlemen, if there's no more question, I want to really thank you for your participation. It took us about four, 15 minutes more than we expected, but it's due to the uh, management and uh, we're tuning in. Uh, but it was a lovely experience. We enjoyed it. And thank you very much for being with us. It's recorded. I will send you all um, a link to the recording and you'll be able to see it again and show it to teachers. And we will have scheduled another one uh, very shortly so that we can bring the teachers on board. Thank you very much, Dr. Amnon, I think we can work on this. Thank you. Amnon ji, I think we can work on this very, very well. Very good, I'm glad. Your I'm really glad I have understood what technology you're trying to shift. I understand what you're trying to teach. And India is waterlogged all over so that we can do your desalination plants or coastal cities. Bangalore itself is landlocked, has a water problem. We can use your technologies and help people. Okay. I am Excellent. in for this project. Thank you very much for your feedback, very important. Ralphie, thank you very much for introducing India to us. Ralphie and Zipporah, wonderful. Amat thank and you. everybody else. Best of luck and thank you for the wonderful explanation. Thank, thank you. So thank I'm you. Known. For, I'm known. Yes, Ralphie. Please ask uh, Malaki to send a short uh, brief note on today's meeting to all of us. He has all the emails and also our friend uh, from Bangalore who offered to teach is a great suggestion and we can you know, have Zoom call with the participants. And I yes. already told our Rotrack president to form the group of students who want to participate. So what is the number of students you want to participate in from one group? Well, you know, one class is the best. One or, one or two classes from each school, because otherwise it's very challenging. So you have a, you an know, excelling class for many, openers. How many students we have in one class? 60. About 30, 40, you know, tw between 20 and 40. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> okay, uh, 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 I don't know what, you have classes with the 200 students uh, in, in India? In some colleges, yes, but in the KC college, we have uh, 60. I think my friend Dave wants to share something important. Okay. I yeah. studied with 120 students when I was at school. Okay, so we're, we're, it seems like we have a lot to learn about India. First yeah, of all, we have a lot on to every learn side, a lot to share. Amra, I will, I will actually side with you, saying twenty to twenty-five students maximum. Otherwise, you cannot get to each one personally. Yeah, that's right. And you know, the, the, the another thing to note here. Uh, first of all, one, one thing, uh, 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 Alfi Malki will send you a list of all the people that he. Uh, does not have the email too, because we do not have the email from parents. So, so Michael will send you a list of those people whom we don't have the email so that we can communicate. We establish a database. Uh, and then I think... No, while you were talking, I have given him all my club and my Rotractors, everybody's email already to Malki. Uh, very good. Okay, so whatever. We'll complete that. Wonderful. Uh, and... Uh, and uh, the, the, the thing is this, you know, we are really uh, focusing on the teachers because we support the teachers and we give them the ideas and so forth. So now, uh, in terms of students, it is up to the teachers. You know, if a set of two teachers can handle 100 students, by all means, let them have 100 students. But I think that you're right. It would be better to start with a smaller group. See, the thing is this, 
Let me tell you one other thing from my experience with this uh, innovative program. This innovative program, the Rotary Hands Across Water, is a successful program, not because everything we thought of was right. On the contrary, most of what we did was wrong. But we learned, we listened to criticism, we learned from our mistakes, and we constantly improved. Now, in order to be able to do that, when we start this twinning process, we are bound to make mistakes. Right now, today, we made a big mistake not knowing what the timing of the school year is in uh, India, let alone my mistakes last night in terms of the timing for the call. So we are going to make mistakes. Now, the more students we have, the more load we have, the less opportunity we have to correct this. And remember, this is a pilot. When we come to a school in Israel, we talk out of a lot of self-confidence, having run it with 15,000 students for you know, so many years. So we are very experienced and, and we have by far more self-confidence in the program. When we start the pilot, this is new. So it is much better to start at low key because if you start too big and we make a few mistakes, there's no recovery. If we have a small school, small group, and we make mistake and we can correct, then at the end of the year, we are all happy and then we can expand. So there's no reason for us to rush and start very big. Once we do the pilot, we can expand, not a problem. Our goal is to expand. But we don't want to rush it. We want to try. Okay. This is a pilot. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Michael, you want to ask another question? Do you have any comment to add? No, no, that's all for me. Yeah, okay. I just want to ask one question. Okay. Uh, the young uh, Otarians uh, and Rodrax from India, what do you feel? Trina and Manman, how do you feel about the presentation? I like the presentation overall that you have the showcase. And I have seen the way you all have worked last year as our Rotary presented the whole video that the way you all hear the river and everything. And I'm, me and my team and the other Rotaractors and the clubs are looking forward to work with you all and make sure that we come over this issue very soon. Very good. And we also have Rotaract groups working on the program. We didn't bring them on board today, but they do exist. So that would be no problem. In fact, the biggest uh, Rotaract program uh, runs in the Haifa Club, which is the host club of the, of the program. So not a problem at all to have Rotaracts working with you guys. They would love it. In fact, uh, there is, by the way, uh, yeah, that's a last note that's important. There is a program now that is run by the Haifa Rotaract that is aiming uh, to create a youth campaign, campaign over the internet, uh, of promoting a subject like uh, protecting the ocean from plastic or uh, what is uh, um, uh, care for water resources and so forth. It will be a six session webinar that will train youngsters as to how to build a campaign and will that let them uh, have an opportunity at building a campaign. If you want to join, uh, we can gladly send you the information and the Haifa Club Rotaract would love to have you. They have a big uh, Miller House, which is a, a youth um, education facility ran by the Haifa Club and they would love to host you on it. It's free for everybody. You can just log in and participate. We will send you the details. Please do send it because our Rotractors will be very glad to participate and I will request my Rotractors to prepare a special program introducing India to those Rotractors from Israel because they okay, very good. come to India after the army. So you are giving them some kind of India introduction now will help them. Excellent. Absolutely. You are right. You know, it's part of the education system going to the high school, going to the military, and going to India is based on, uh, a, a base step, basic steps in the upbringing of youth in Israel. <laughs> you know, every year, more than 30,000 Israeli youth and families, they come and visit our country, which is reciprocated also by business people. So nearly 70,000 people from Israeli citizens come to India 
and we from India also equally reciprocate. But now we have already no. crossed hundred thousand Indians coming to Israel, except during Corona. <laughs> yeah. No more uh, Corona put it and all complete standstill. Yeah. Of course, we will like, overcome this by God's grace. Yes. But that carry, is on with the, carry on with this uh, procedures program. Right. But they say once you stop somebody from doing something right, they will always do more after the corona goes away. So nice. <laughs> That's day. right. They... right. I believe the coronavirus has pandemic has been mismanaged drastically worldwide. Well, true. this is true. Seven percent of the people do not even show symptoms. Yeah. There are more people who die of common flu, liver yeah. disease, tuberculosis, heart disease than coronavirus. True, true, yeah. true. And uh, that, that yeah. is a problem, right? But I'll tell you one thing: it has brought the world closer together through Zoom. <laughs> 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 okay, guys, thank you very okay. much for joining us today, <laughs> and we will be in touch. Thank you, thank you for the meeting. Bye, 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 thank you, bye, bye. thank you for the meeting. Bye, bye, Zipora. Thank you, Ralphie. Bye. Thank you, Heman. Thank you, Jagdeep. Thank you, thank you, thank you all. Bye. Thank you, Hamad. Yeah.